And this meeting is now called, called to order. Welcome to the warm and friendly Westwood Village Rotary Club and happy birthday to Rotary, 116 years of wonderful work in the world. Wonderful, congratulations. <laughs> It really is remarkable when you think about it. When you think of how much the world has changed in 116 years, it's pretty phenomenal. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. And we will move right along. Jim Crane, would you please lead us in the pledge? Okay, everybody put their hand over their heart and follow after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, just with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. I agree. I agree. Okay. And now, John O'Keefe going to share the thought for the day. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, in these times of so much divisiveness in our country, it is good to reflect on the important, to reflect on and to cherish the important things of life, our relationships with others. So with that in mind, I'm gonna read a short poem entitled, The Train of Life. At birth, we boarded the train and met our parents. And we believe they will always travel on our side. However, at some station, our parents will step down from the train, leaving us on this journey alone. As time goes by, other people will board the train and they will be significant. Our siblings, friends, our children, volunteers, and even the love of our life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum. Others will go so unnoticed that we don't realize they vacated, they vacated their seats. This train ride will be full of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes, and farewells. Success consists of having a good relationship with all the passengers, requiring that we give the very best of ourselves. The mystery to everyone is we do not know at which station we ourselves will step down. So we must live in the best way, love, forgive, and offer the best of who we are. It is important to do this because when the, tr when the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who will continue to travel on the train of life. I wish you a joyful journey on the train of life. <clears throat> Great success and give lots of love. More importantly, thank God for the journey. Amen. That was lovely. Thank you, John. You're welcome. And, and, and really, I want to say original too. And now our song meister and for the duration of the pandemic, our soloist, Ed Gall, has chosen a song to honor our guest speaker for today. <laughs> Over to you, Ed. Okay, and uh, I take it people can hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> and good because the uh, theme is uh, medical care being offered in third world countries, I thought it would be fitting to sing the Hymn of Nations song. Uh, you, you're probably not familiar with it, but I think the tune is familiar, so let me sing it. 
Brother, sing your country's anthem, shout mm -hmm. your land's undying fame. Like the wondrous tales of nations with your people's golden name. Tell your father's noble story, raise on high your country's sign. Join them in the final glory, brother, lift your flag with mine. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. I didn't know that song before. So that seems like an appropriate choice. Thank you again. You're welcome. And now we'd like to welcome our visitors. We have a distinguished guest with, their, with us today, our assistant governor, Michael Lushing, who I understand is recovering from surgery and you chose to spend it with us. So that, that's, a, that's a, a, a vote of hope and, and healing. So welcome, we're happy to have you with us. And I see that we have a guest named Alondra. Hi, yes, hello. She's with me. Oh, great, okay, and you're so welcome. I kind of assumed that, but I, I, I don't like to ignore guests. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you joined us and I'm sure that You'll enjoy Whitney's talk as much as I know that we will. I'm and sure am I overlooking any guests? Yeah. yeah, well, I was supposed to have a guest, but I'm not sure she's there. Bianca Filippi, are you there, Bianca? I, guess I haven't must, seen the name. I guess the traffic, I out, seen. Yeah, I guess the okay. traffic out to Westwood must have been too difficult. So I won't introduce her. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, if I see her come in... If she comes I in, will, I'll see her, I but I won't break into the talk. <laughs> okay. Nan well, then Nancy, yes. Nancy, I have, a special, yeah. I, have a special, I have a special guest today. Oh, my, wonderful. My uh, lovely and uh, better and better half of me, Lisa Chapman, is here today. Oh, wonderful. Welcome, Lisa. We're very happy to have you with us. That's tremendous. And I know that you have a lot going on. So it's great that you're here. So lovely to see and, you all. And please, oh, great. And please feel free to join us anytime that you would like to. So that's terrific. And Phil, I'm glad you spoke up because I didn't see Lisa's name on the screen. And I would never ignore you, Lisa. I hope you know that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now we have several announcements. And Marsha can speak to this really better than I, but Rotary, the Rotary Foundation has announced that the application process for the Rotary Peace Fellowships uh, has now uh, opened. And these are for fellowships for master's degrees and certificate studies for the 2022-2023 program. And this is a truly impressive program. Rotary Peace Centers have trained more than 1,400 fellows in the last 19 years who now serve in significant roles in over 115 countries around the world. So it truly is awe-inspiring. And if anybody has someone whom they would like to suggest, I think, Martha, you're the best contact, right? They can contact me about it, yes. Okay. And they have... Um... Yeah, there's, I think there's seven sites around the world now that they just added the newest one and it is in Kampala, Uganda, actually, is the newest peace center. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's great. Okay, I planned so. I it last year, yeah, we'll but my plan changed, as we all know. But I'll go next to my go. Great, this, great. <clears throat> Marcia, is, is this for students or is this for adults too? This is adults. Okay. This is for Yes. It's well, for young adults, usually. Yeah, master's know? degrees, and when they say certificate studies, I assume these are people who are probably college graduates. The, the most of them are college graduates and have even been out of college for a couple of years, you know? So I think that sounds like a phenomenal opportunity. We have a number of district activities going on. 
This Saturday is the second diversity, equity, and inclusion program that I understand has been very well attended so far. And it does require registration, which is available on the district website. Then on March 13th, the district is holding a career fair for Rotaracts, and I let our UCLA Rotaracts know about it. And uh, in speaking to somebody at the district, I found that Interacts are also welcome to attend. And then there will be another Camp Pendleton collection, series of collections, which based on our speaker last week, I think there will be a lot of interest in here, uh, in our club. And there, are, I believe there will be four pickup sites around the LA area. So that's for two days in uh, the middle of March. And we'll talk about that again too. We'll talk about the pageant of the arts more in just a moment. And RILA will be also virtual this year and that's being held April 23rd and 24th. And the district is now offering matching scholarships for <clears throat> seniors. So this club, as I know, has in the past offered scholarships to, I believe, two high school seniors. So if we were to submit those names to the district, which we would, the district would match the amount of money that we're giving those students. And that application is due in mid-May, so there is time, and I will bring that up again. And uh, Phil has been busy at work on the new pageant of the arts for this year. We talked about the categories and the deadline last time. They have announced the theme, Doing Good in the World, and Phil has contacted the teachers and the principal at Uni High to let um, them know, yes. And so I haven't heard back now, I've sent now two emails to everybody. Okay. And I really? haven't heard back from anybody. Okay. Okay, then I what I will do is forward your email. Thank you for telling me. Um, and it's I, I, I don't know the school systems enough to why they would be screening at yours, but not mine. But I'm I guess I'm not shocked that they screen out possibly commercial messages right. of some sort. So I thank you for telling me, and I will forward your message to all of those other people. I forward it to Claudia Middleton, the, the principal, and I'll follow up with all of the teachers with your message as well, okay. so that they understand that you're the person who's who's leading this yeah. program. Yeah, just uh, uh, I think I think I put my information in there to contact me by phone, but if you could, uh, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to probably get another email address, hopefully to send stuff out, because this okay. obviously isn't working. So. Yeah, that's strange. Well, we'll figure out how to fix that. And the, the application deadline to the district is March 17th. Our timing is tight because of this crazy pandemic year. And Phil is planning on the judging for March 10th. So somehow between you know the next less than two weeks, those who choose to participate have to put their, their project or their performance together. So we'll keep you posted. It's, it's not the way we would ideally like to do it, but it is unfortunately, um, unfortunately how it, it works right now. I'm just checking to see if we had any new, and any new guests arriving late. So we will, we will continue that subject. And as we talked about last week, our long range strategic planning process has kicked off by inviting your views on various aspects of how our club operates and what it stands for. And the, the survey went out on Wednesday. It's very easy and quick to fill out online, but if anybody would prefer to work with a PDF document instead, we'll make that available. That would be happy to do that. We want as many people as possible to respond. And Ron informed me uh, a while ago that we've had 10 responses already since yesterday, which is great. So we will be presenting the results at our next club assembly 
on March 25th. So again, if you haven't already filled out your survey, please do so, or please let me know if you would like to handle it in, in another way. Nancy, can I make one more comment? Um, uh -huh. I, will, I, I, I will need judges. So if anyone's interested in judging the speech, um, the music, uh, the art we might we might do in person since this, there won't be any students there, um, but I will need judges. So that's going to be March 10th, probably in the afternoon around three o'clock. Okay. Um, so if, oh, if, if yeah. anyone can put, put put that in your calendar if you're interested in um, if you're interested in being a judge, let myself or Nancy know so I can so I can start making a list. Um, it, it was much easier last couple of years ago when we had uh, in person meetings, but so yeah. everyone is here by the way sorry to interrupt oh, so yeah so if, if I'm, i'll be I'll a judge you can put me on the list yeah you can put me in the list i'll judge and marcia will judge i'll, I'll be a judge, I'll judge whatever yeah. you want me to judge okay can 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 can, can everybody um just 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 send me a quick email so 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 yeah. that can compile yeah. are these judges going to be a uh, virtual yes that all virtual right yeah um, i was thinking i was thinking the art one might be in person because there, there won't be any students there and it would only be our members who would be in the room, so. Where would it be, Phil? It, it, the, well, the, the, school's, the school's not open, Phil. I not just realized that the school isn't open yet. The teachers aren't there either. Oh, okay, so I guess everything would be virtual. Yeah, now. so everything will be virtual. So that makes it easy to participate from wherever you happen to be at that point. Okay. I guess, I guess the, the hiccup right now is is the students being have access to Zoom? Because uh, I, I don't know, some of the students don't have reliable internet, and they're, I'm hoping the school. Doing, yeah, they're do well. They're doing their classes on Zoom, as I understand it. Right. Okay. So, so, but yeah, there may be technical issues, and we'll work on those. Okay. All right. Great. So, if you want to send me an email, not. Not on this chat thing here, but if you can right. send me a physical email to my my email address, that'd be great. Would do. Wonderful. Thank you, Phil. And the Santa Monica Rotary Club, which holds a monthly happy hour for their members, have invited us to join them on March 2nd. That's next Tuesday from five to six. We thought it would be fun to get, for more of us to get acquainted with members of uh, each other's clubs. We also talked about, and I, when I say we are talking about the president of Santa Monica, and I talked about also taking the opportunity to brainstorm about ways that we might partner up on some projects together. They're very interested in doing that, and we are too. So that will at least get the ball rolling. And I think it helps first to know, and some of you probably know a lot of those members. I, I think mm. I know one. <laughs> so, so, so we will, and I will send out reminders beforehand, but I think it will be fun to get to know or spend some time with other Rotarians. And by the way, please feel free to invite family, friends, other Rotarians, anybody you wish. I think it will be an enjoyable event. And I would like to see us do that even with them again and with other clubs too. Nancy, be sure to have them send the link. I have the link. I, I, I have it and I'm going to be sending out it. Okay. Uh, the, their president sent, it, sent the invitation to me just before this meeting started and I will be sending out an invitation to everyone this probably this afternoon or certainly by tomorrow morning so thank you tom uh, yeah it's easy to forget the important details isn't it? <laughs> so uh, i want to thank tom who has graciously offered to be our scribe for today tom does it often you always do a wonderful job and i thank you on behalf of everybody and as I've mentioned in the past, we do record these meetings and, the, and, and our web maestro, Ron edits them so they're a manageable length and the content is you know, all meaningful. And the recordings are regularly posted on our website, usually within about 24 hours of our meeting. 
and on YouTube and on Vimeo. Nancy, do and the now others... it is. I'm sorry. I was wondering, do the other members what know what? I get a hundred dollars for doing this every time? <laughs> no, they don't. We've been keeping that a secret. <laughs> I'll take over. I'll take over that job. <laughs> not, not to the secret. He, he bills a hundred. He never gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> not to the secret slush. That money's in the secret slush fund, right? <laughs> hey, hey, Nancy. <laughs> Yes. Nancy, just real, real quick, uh, there was a case I think in uh, Arizona where someone spoke at a Rotary Club, uh -huh. and they yes. posted his comments, com comments, and he ended up losing his job. So we need to make sure we tell our speakers. The president of the Seattle Mariner. Yeah, it was yeah. the president of the Sierra, uh, the the Seattle Mariners baseball team. Yeah. So we we, we need to make sure we tell. Unbelievably tell our obnoxious. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. What he, it doesn't matter what he said. But. We don't have we don't invite people fired. like that. Yeah, we don't well, have to worry. I think, I think we should make everyone aware that, that all of their comments will be publicly accountable. So they just, <laughs> so. Yes, I was astonished. At, I mean, just to even think those things privately is bad enough to say them publicly and think it was okay is appalling to me. So, um, you know, he, I, I want to say he got what he deserved, but I, you know, I don't want to make political comments. So, so anyway, it is Can I just, my privilege. Oh, Ali, are you? Yeah, I just wanted to just ahead, say please. something really quick. Thank you all for your support to London last week. She and her troop are very appreciative. And I want to publicly thank Ed Gold for sending his check to her troop. And oh, I'm happy cool. to pay that for to our Rotary Foundation, Terry. So thank you, Ed, and um, thank you all. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That That's obviously a popular tradition in this club. So it's my pleasure in the last week of each month and it's astonishing to me that we're now leaving the second month of, of a year that I can't believe is here already to celebrate a member who is an exceptional human being. And we are blessed with a lot of very special people in this club. And most of the people who have been recognized so far are people who do great service to the club. And as a result, great services provided to the community. This is a person who has provided great service to the world through Rotary. And so it is my pleasure to honor Carol Rosenstein for her um, astonishing work with Music Men's Minds and here you will see a graphic from what I understand was a marvelous and special Valentine's Day concert that was held last weekend. I unfortunately wasn't able to be there, so I'm thankful for the link. I'm posting the link so that anyone who's interested knows that there is a link to a recording that I will be happy to forward to you. Carol, what you've accomplished with Music Men's Minds is staggering. And so you will be receiving this certificate in the mail, along with a Rotarian of the Month pin. And we're, we're proud of you. We're very, very proud of you. And to see all the levels of Rotary that you have gotten involved with to advance this very important cause is really, really moving. And by the way, I want to apologize to the other Rotarians of the month because I didn't think of scanning in the certificate until Steve Day sent me scans of the uh, Paul Harris Fellow certificates. And I thought, oh, I should have been doing that all along. So, so Carol, congratulations. And we you know, really are so proud of you and all the work that you do. You're on mute, actually. <laughs> Thank you so much, President Nancy, and to my club. I'm deeply, deeply moved. 
I'm very tired, so I'm sorry that I can't be at all of the club events, but um, the, the world is listening to <laughs> MMM right now, and it is just amazing. Thank you for being in my corner. I couldn't do this without you all, and I will promise I will continue to make you very proud. Oh, I have no no doubt of that whatsoever and really we're very very happy for you and and again happy to have you in our club you're an inspiration thank you every day i want to say so congratulations again and and you reflect so well on us and on rotary and I, I think that's tremendously important. So, and I, you know, by the way, to everybody else, I don't know how many of you know this, Carol had COVID recently. And I believe I announced it at a meeting, but I don't know if all of you were here. She still came to the beginning of the meetings to, I, I would say, lend your support and, and then I would notice about halfway through the, the meeting and I, I could tell that you were exhausted. I mean, you look beautiful. Please, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but that's amazing. That, that's astonishing that kind of effort, it's reflective in everything else you do. So kudos to you, many, many, many kudos to you, Carol. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you are you are most welcome. And now I would like to introduce our speaker. Tom, did you want to say anything first? Sure. I thought I was going to introduce her, actually. Please. Well, uh, please. OK. Um, Whitney Horth Hawthorne came to my attention, and she's a volunteer coordinator for the UCLA Global Medical Training. Global Medical Training is an international humanitarian organization that provides free healthcare services in developing communities of Central America. Through GMT, students and volunteers, mostly UCLA, travel with professional guides and doctors, setting up field clinics in rural villages to provide medical care for the local indigenous people. The UCLA GMT chapter is a student-led organization that aims to coordinate and prepare students for one of GMT's international service trips. Now I could go on and talk about the healthcare groups and what Whitney does, but that's what she's here for. So with that, Whitney, turn it over to you to give us an idea, information, and some opinions about GMT and your role in that. Whitney, you're up. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me um, today. I actually have um, a speaker with me, um, Alondra. Um, she's going to be helping me present um, this slide to you. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can see. Let me make let me make you a co-host to make sure that you don't have any diff. Oh, it seems to be working. OK, Is it That's working? Right. You're up. can everybody see everything? Yes. Yes. Awesome. awesome. OK, cool. So yeah, um, like Tom said, I am part of Global Medical Training at UCLA, um, and so is Alondra. She's going to be presenting with me. Um, so I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about myself, um, and then Alondra will tell, um, tell you guys a little bit about herself, just so you have um, kind of an idea of us as students before we talk about the club. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm Whitney, and um, I'm here to tell you about Global Medical Training at UCLA, and I am the volunteer director um, on campus for the club. Hi everyone, I'm Alondra Olmos. I'm also here to talk to you about GMT. I decided I would help out Whitney a little bit. Um, and I am the co-finance director for the club. Okay, so I thought I'd kind of give you guys a little bit of background about myself, how I got to GMT, how I got to UCLA, stuff like that. Um, so I'm actually originally from a small rural town in um, Central Virginia called Beaverdam. Um, and I grew up with a love uh, for medicine um, as the healthcare workers, healthcare workers of 
uh, Virginia Commonwealth University instilled a sense of community for me um, in my care as a young child with a chronic condition. Um, and their empathy um, really inspired me to, um, to seek out um, opportunities with the healthcare industry. Um, and alongside my general curiosity, I started looking out for um, neuroscience programs all across the country and eventually landed um, at UCLA. Um, and coming from such a small rural town, there wasn't quite um, as much access to healthcare, um, especially specialty healthcare um, in the area that I am from. And so this kind of made me consider um, other countries and uh, their access to healthcare in general. Um, and I really wanted to be part of closing that gap. Um, and luckily, when I got to UCLA, I found uh, global medical training and um, decided it would be the perfect opportunity for me to not only advance my foreign language skills and develop um, relationships with patients, but also just to learn more about healthcare in other countries and engage with the communities um, and get to know them. Okay, now I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So I grew up in a small town in the Central Valley of California called Delano. Not sure if you guys have ever heard of it. Um, its population is mostly made up of Spanish speaking farmers and agricultural workers in which my parents fall under. So my parents did not go to college, but they made it one of their top priorities to make make sure that me and my four older brothers um, were able to pursue higher education. So I fell in love with the idea of pursuing a career in medicine when I was in elementary school, um, simply because I knew I loved to help people and I wanted to help people for the rest of my life. So now that I've grown older and seen more of the world, um, this desire has turned more into realization and passion for the idea that change can be made on a bigger scale than what I'm used to. So within my first week at UCLA, I realized that you know, my perspective of the world was a lot smaller than it could be considering I grew up in the Central Valley, which is very excluded from you know, the rest of California and the world and um, not, not really having the ability to travel much. So when I heard a peer talk about GMT, it seemed like the perfect place for me to get hands-on experience with patients while also educating myself and opening my mind to what else was out there, what life is like in different countries and what daily challenges people go through that I would have never thought of before. Um, and it was just a bonus that this club primarily focuses on Latin countries that will that would allow me to learn about new cultures that were similar to mine. My parents uh, were born and raised in Mexico, so I am I was raised on um, a lot of Mexican traditions and to be able to strengthen my Spanish speaking abilities as I, my first language was English, but I am um, proficient in Spanish. And so um, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of where I am now as well. Um, so with global medical training, I was able to visit Panama um, for a week and um, did a trip with them. So basically my, my trip furthered my interest in medicine and I met patients and went places um, that will ever have a, forever have a place in my heart. Um, I remember I had this one patient who came in uh, complaining of a stomach ache. He was a young boy um, and he um, came in with his mother and there was something, I could tell there was like something else kind of going on. Um, and we actually ended up finding out um, that like he had a family emergency that was going on at the same time and that this is what was causing his um, his stomach pain um, was that he he wasn't motivated to be eating um, because of everything that was happening. Um, it was a very emotional time for him, which is totally understandable. And um, I will never forget that patient. I think, um, you know, he really had a big impact on um, what I want to do with my life. Um, so, yeah. And, um, you know, afterward, I, I continued to be passionate about my studies um, and really looked forward to um, having another adventure with global medical training and, of course, joining um, the healthcare services in general um, and building more connections with patients and their families. Um, currently, I am a third year neuroscience major um, at UCLA with a minor in philosophy and hopefully a minor in disability studies. I'm hoping to add that very shortly. 
Um, and again, I was appointed to be the volunteer coordinator for global medical training at UCLA um, for this ad academic year. And then here's some pictures from my trip just to give you guys kind of an idea of what Panama looks like. Um, so over here on the left, um, this is actually a picture straight out of one of our clinics. Um, you can kind of see a little hut. Um, and then also the mountains are just really gorgeous um, out there um, in the wilderness. And then um, uh, the picture on the top right, um, you can see this is where we set up one of our clinics. This is actually a school. Um, and we um, set up our clinic and had the patients sit around in the chairs and we um, talked to them about what was going on and um, began uh, diagnoses and, and things like that um, just inside that building right there. And then down here on the bottom right um, is all of the people, the lovely people I got to work with um, in helping treat patients and get medications out to them and, and things like that. So really a lovely group of people. Um, I still communicate with a, a good portion of them and it's been really great building a community with them alongside um, treating patients. Uh, yeah, so as for me, before my first trip with GMT, um, I was really starting to question my uh, career path as I was finding myself really stressed out over general chemistry and really forgetting what I was like devoting myself to my studies for. And I was truly starting to think that the medical track was not for me and started looking into mm -hmm. other paths to go into. But then thankfully I was chosen to travel with GMT to the Dominican Republic in December of 2019, which was after the beginning of my second year at UCLA. And after that trip, that spark inside of me was ignited again and it hasn't died since. Um, so now I'm a third year and I'm still a biology major as I came in as, and every time I'm stressing about biochemistry, which I still do and questioning why I would put myself through such a difficult course, I can look back at the pictures of this trip that truly changed my life and remember that's who and what I'm doing it for. The connections I made with the patients, especially being able to speak to them in Spanish as my um, Spanish speaking abilities uh, really improved within just the week that I was there. It truly meant a lot to be able to speak to all those kids that you know you see in that picture. That's just a small portion of the ones that I got to um, talk to. And this is a few more pictures. So the picture on the top is a little idea of what the these rural parts of the Dominican Republic look like that we visited. Um, the kids playing in alleyways, you know, barefoot with dirt roads and you know, broken down homes, but it was beautiful. I loved spending time there. And these are some more pictures with the kids. They love stickers. I took a lot of stickers for them and they loved it. <laughs> <laughs> they do love stickers. We also brought like bouncy balls and stuff like that, which was really fun uh, to give out to the kids. Um, yeah, they just, they really just brighten up your day every, every single time. And getting to talk to them is, is such an honor as well. And it, it's a great opportunity for you to advance your, your Spanish speaking skills, just like Alondra was saying. Okay, so now we'll kind of talk about global medical training as, a, as an organization. Um, before we talk about global medical training at UCLA specifically. Um, so global medical training is an international hum humanitarian organization that provides free medical dental services to medically deprived communities in Central American countries. A prime corollary um, is offering healthcare students, professionals, and interested others a truly international experience that will expand their understanding of medicine, dentistry, and life outside of North America. And this is straight from the GMT website, um, which I also linked um, in the uh, last slide um, for you guys to, to see if you want to learn more about um, the club. So a little bit of history. Um, Global Medical Training was founded in 2003 and began running trips in January of 2004. Um, GMT is now a legally registered nonprofit IRS approved 401c3 organizations in the US, and we are also registered as a corporation. Um, it serves the citizens of Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, 
Ecuador, the Dominican Republic, and India. Oh. Yeah, um, we haven't had a chance to actually take a trip to India um, ourselves, like um, the GMT at UCLA, but that is one of the um, new trips that we're hoping to eventually um, take part in. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about uh, GMT's objectives. Um, so basically, GMT um, seeks to teach students basic clinical skills, um, basic dental medical knowledge, um, the art of medicine, um, so that we can be prepared for um, and during the implementation of our clinics. Um, we also want to provide students with a firsthand experience of cultural, social, historical, and political life in these different regions that we visit. Um, we discuss uh, and integrate uh, this into the medical process with our patients, um, and many issues will um, are discussed, uh, such as the relationship of poverty, education, and public health to illness and well-being. Um, so it's really a, a whole uh, public health process. We we really um, do our best to be culturally competent every single time we take a trip. And of course, um, to provide as a team uh, free medical and dental health care services um, and free medicines to those in need in uh, Latin America, um, more specifically. So a few points on GMT's methodology. Um, GMT believes that, or um, says that participants will travel to countries and communities where there is a great need for medical attention. Upon arrival, students will receive specific orientation and training for the clinics and the trip. Um, and before arrival, uh, GMT at UCLA specifically trains students for 10 weeks on um, mock clinics and learning about the different diseases and um, treatments that we might um, experience at the specific country that we're going to. Um, so our approach is student-centered teaching and learning and active student participation in the process of medical assessments and treatments in which we learn by doing. Um, many issues are discussed, um, for example, the relationship of poverty, education, and public health to illness and well-being of the country's citizens. Um, Students will be exposed to a medical environment where they will be allowed to observe and actively participate in the medical assessments and treatments of patients who have scarce economic resources, poor access to health care, and have to live within various primitive types of public health care systems. And we do this in various settings, including urban and rural. Yeah, like on my trip specifically, we um, we saw three rural communities and one urban community. Um, it was really great to see the distinct the distinction between um, those communities, but at the same time, like the need in in all four. Um, so it was really a, an amazing experience to to see how even in urban communities there's this um, this health disparity as well. Um, so continuing with like uh, GMT's methodology. Um, so we have clinics, um, visits to hospitals, um, visits to other health facilities and visits to patient homes. Um, and we employ local doctors, dentists, uh, interpreters and guides um, to teach, inform and help students um, on their trips. Um, we utilize local community citizens to help with the clinics. So everything that we do with GMT is really centered around the community. Um, it's not only uh, more sustainable that way, but also um, the patients get the opportunity to be treated by doctors that are local to them, um, doctors that they can really connect with on a cultural level. Um, so it's a little bit uh, easier for them to um, speak with them and um, talk about any kind of experiences because they can connect on um, a, a different level than if they, if we had doctors like um, all from the United States, for example. Um, so we uh, inform trip uh, participants about cultural history, politics, and comparative healthcare systems, and public health problems of the countries that uh, we do. Um, we teach them how to apply that information in their experiences in the clinic. Um, and we reflect upon and discuss the medical and cultural experiences and to integrate them um, into action plans that will improve the well-being of the people that we serve. 
medical and other um, professionals are responsible for closely supervising teaching and nurturing the process. Um, so basically when we're in clinic, um, we are the first ones to see the patient. We um, take down all of their vitals. We talk about um, what their major um, health issue that brings them to the clinic is. Um, and we discuss any further things that they might be worried about. And then the doctor, we'd call the doctor over. We speak with the doctor, um, give a presentation about the patient or patients um, because we do serve families um, as a whole. And um, then the doctor kind of gives us an idea of um, a treatment plan and we discuss that with the doctor. And then we uh, go through with any kind of medications that might be necessary uh, for those for those patients. Um, so it really is a team effort um, in every sense of the word. And obviously we have our interpreters that we work with as well. So it's, it's really engaging with the community in every way that we possibly can um, and in the most culturally competent way that we can as well. Right, and that's a, that's a huge point that we like to make is we are still students. We're definitely not medical professionals yet. So um, we make sure that the patients know that there are medical professionals there with us so um, they can trust us and we're just there to learn. And um, it really is helpful in get, getting them to be more comfortable. Sorry, so the, um, so in summary of what GMT is all about, the basic idea is that we partner with health professionals living in these communities to offer free medical clinics for individuals lacking consistent access to care. Students are given the unique chance to directly participate in diagnosis and treatment plans under physician supervision. Um, students, student volunteers develop valuable clinical skills and learn about health systems in developing countries, equipping them to become effectors of change in the field of global health. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about global medical training at UCLA specifically, the kinds of things that our club does um, in addition to everything that we just talked about, um, and also just in general, the kinds of things that we do at UCLA to help um, the club progress. So here's just a little um, graphic. Um, so you can see UCLA is over here. Um, and then here are some of the countries that we serve. So like the Dominican Republic, Panama, uh, Peru, Ecuador, uh, Nicaragua. So uh, UCLA's principles of excellence include compassion, continuous hands-on learning, you know, uh, referring to, like I said, the 10 weeks of training where we do mock clinics with each other and um, have the hands-on learning while we're there. Um, sustainability, ethics and cultural competence. So we have public health presentations to um, teach us about what to expect in regards to what culture we're walking into and how to be respectful when we're there, um, community support and teamwork. And we look for all of these um, principles of excellence in our applications as well. Um, and obviously um, we help build them um, through our, Mac, our mock clinics and, and on the, the trips as well. But, um, but these are the kinds of things that we really search for, for the people that we allow to, to go on trips as well, um, is really uh, the compassion and the, the care for hands-on learning, learning and cultural competence and, and being able to work in a team and things like that. And so um, how do we make an impact? Well, um, we do this through medical care by assisting doctors in the clinics, taking vitals, um, medical and social history, like I was saying before. Um, we're the first people to interact with the patients. And then also through community improvement. Um, so we carry out public health projects such as installing water filters, uh, which provide 10 years of clean water to each of the communities that we serve. Uh, so every single community that we um, have a clinic with um, we bring two water filters with us um, and install them in the community so that they can have access to clean water. Um, and this is a really important preventative measure for um, certain illnesses um, such as parasites and, and things like that, infections um, of that sort. And then also we um, do an impact, we make an impact with health education. 
So we give health education presentations about nutrition, hygiene, water safety, and more. Um, and you'll get to see a little bit more about um, our health education posters in just a little bit. But the basic idea is that we come to each community and we present um, the kinds of preventative measures um, that are helpful for them and um, give them kind of an idea of ways that they can uh, be active in um, having a more healthy lifestyle um, despite the disparities that they, they experience. So there are a couple uh, pictures showing the water filtration system that we set up and um, some informative flyers that we like to give out and post up. So um, they're, they're aware of, you know, those um, health measures that we try to um, implement. Yeah, so you can see like in this picture over here, um, the difference between the water that we put into the bucket versus the clean water that comes out. Um, yeah, so um, it's it's really uh, a substantial uh, change that we're able to make um, having these communities have access to uh, clean water. Um, and we really wish that we could um, have the capability of even bringing even more of these filters with us because um, they really can make a difference in the uh, well-being of, of the communities that we serve. Um, and yeah, and then uh, like Alondra was saying, like this is one of the posters that we've created um, that kind of just gives some recommendations about um, like the importance of um, sun protection. Um, and um, we also have other posters on other um, important things like eating healthy and, and things like that. And then so here um, is just an overview of um, the preparation that we do um, with students that are gonna go on the trips. Um, so we were talking about before that we do in mock clinics. So um, basically <clears throat> we have weekly meetings um, with workshops on certain common health conditions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that the patients that we see um, experience. So our first workshop is just a, an information session to let the uh, students know about um, the trip and uh, everything that goes into it. And they attend this before they apply to go on to the trip. And then workshop two, um, we go over uh, SOAP, which is just a way of, um, it's just a way of um, basically getting the medical history um, for the patients. And then we also go over ears, eyes, nose, and throat. Um, and so we go, we'll go over um, certain infections or conditions of those, um, those parts of the body. And then walk, workshop three, we talk about the heart and lungs. Workshop four, we talk about skin and parasites. Workshop five is a, is a break for students. And we um, have a, a student panel um, from the medical school. So um, students from the medical school will come in and uh, the students will get to ask questions about um, the process of applying to medical school or what it's like to be in medical school and things like that. And then workshop six, um, we talk about the abdomen. Workshop seven is all around um, uh, like OB, um, gynecology, um, any kind of urinary things like that. Um, and then workshop eight is specifically on women's health. Um, and then workshop nine and 10 are just mock clinics. So um, our mock clinics are basically, um, we as directors will like pretend to be a patient and the students that we have going on the trip will um, try to get the kind the our medical history, um, all our vitals, things like that um, to help practice for the actual clinics that we that we do in the communities that we serve. So um, workshop nine and 10 are basically just focused on doing those a couple of different times, um, really honing in on all of the skills that they learned from the previous workshops. So more with the trip preparation, um, like we said, we are visiting these Spanish speaking countries. So um, during our training, we do try to 
do weekly Spanish training during the meetings. So um, we do this by just providing like the most introductory, like small phrases um, because there's no previous Spanish skill that's required to go on a trip because there are um, translators there, but we do still try to teach our trippers, you know, a little bit so that they kind of have a basic idea and can have those little tiny conversations with the patients because it does help with building that connection. Um, so the mock clinics are held every week um, at the workshops and they're catered to the conditions in the country of travel. And like Whitney said, it's run by the directors. Um, so um, each country is different with what conditions are most prominent and what we will see a lot of and what we won't see so much of. So the workshops are kind of built around that. Um, throughout the quarter, tripper, trippers will participate in interactive public health workshops covering principles of the global health ethics and cultural competence and how these translate to student conduct on the trips. And we also discuss major themes and issues in the field of global health, as well as what life is like in the country that the trippers will be visiting. Okay, and just to go over very briefly about the um, costs for the trip. So there's a baseline fee of um, $12.50 and then um, trippers pay for round trip plane tickets. Um, those can range from $500 to $700. Um, they'll then have about $200 of spending money um, on the trip for meals. Um, they will give a $40 deposit for a BP cuff um, and a stethoscope, um, or they can bring their own and they'll be reimbursed for this um, if they return it after the trip. And then trippers pay for their own scrubs. Um, and then there's also the $15 um, global medical training fee that we have um, that pays for um, extraneous materials that we need for the trip and also for the t-shirts that they receive. Um, so you can see down here kind of a estimation of how much it costs uh, to go on a trip. Yeah, and so that's definitely not a small total. Um, and, you know, we as a club recognize that. So we try to give out as many scholarships as we can. It typically runs to be around, we can give out like two scholarships of a small amount, but it really depends how much we have to be able to give out. So finding ways to be able to raise money as um, for the club to be able to help students is really important to us because um, this isn't doable for everyone and we know it's hard but we are extremely lucky to have people who can afford to do it. Okay, and then this is just like a picture um, and a brief description of the kinds of medical supplies that we bring. Um, so we do bring medical supplies with us. Um, so this includes uh, like different kinds of medications, vitamins, um, things like that. Uh, so GMT, uh, we received don donations. Um, to take with us on our, our trips. Um, and most of those come from a actually a different club on campus um, that collects um, different medical supplies from the local hospital. So that would be like Ronald Reagan, for example. Um, and then part of the trip fee goes towards purchasing the different medications and uh, clinical supplies that we use as well. And then, so now we're gonna give you guys just a brief overview of the kinds of things that we're currently doing since we can't be going on trips right now. Um, so we are trying- I'm sorry, could I yeah. just briefly interrupt you? Yeah. And I apologize. Uh, our meeting typically ends at 1.30 and I personally am interested in hearing more of what you have to say, but I know that some of our members will need to leave. Okay. So I just wanted to let them know to to feel free uh, to go and and if you're willing to continue that's great yeah we just have a few more minutes as well so um it shouldn't be too bad great. um so here's just a few of the things that we are currently doing um we're currently volunteering with um not all of our um members are doing these specific volunteering opportunities some of them have their own volunteering opportunities that they're doing instead 
um, especially since not everybody is in the Westwood area, um, but everybody is doing um, some form of volunteering with their communities right now um, in lieu of us being able to go on trips. Um, so one of the things that um, we're currently doing is uh, volunteering with the Westwood Transitional Village and we're like collecting items for them um, and donating them uh, to the village. And then also we are volunteering with Venice Family Clinic, um, helping fight food insecurity in the Los Angeles area um, where we volunteer with their free food markets. Um, and doing this in a COVID safe way, um, obviously. Um, we also have some of our members participating in reading to kids. They do this virtually for elementary schools throughout Los Angeles. And there's also um, an organization called Frontlines Tutoring in which it is also run, ran online. It is for, um, it's where our, um, our members can tutor students K through 12 who are children of healthcare providers um, who are currently busy, you know, fighting on the front lines of COVID-19 and can't um, completely be there for their kids' um, virtual learning. And then we also have members donating, donating blood um, here at UCLA Health. And so that is um, everything. And thank you so much for uh, listening to our talk. Um, you can always contact us. Um, feel free to take a, a screenshot or um, take a picture or anything like that. Um, and if you guys want me to share these slides with you, I can, I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening and feel free to contact us if, um, if, you, if you need. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here. This was fascinating and really inspiring. And I personally can't help but think on the one hand, you're providing such important service to the, the people who are being treated. And also along the lines of what you said earlier, Whitney, the tremendous impact on your future career by virtue of having, having had these experiences. So it was, moving and fascinating. And as a thank you for being with us today, we're going to make a donation to the Westwood branch of the Los Angeles Public Library in your names. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Hey. So, so it's an honor. Does anybody have any questions? I have one, Nancy. Wendy, uh, when you get into these, I presume you go to small villages in these uh, Central American countries. Is that correct? Yes. If not the cities and stuff, but do you really encounter basic hygiene problems such as brushing their teeth and things like that? Yeah, we do encounter um, some basic hygiene pro problems because um, unfortunately some of our communities don't have access to uh, clean water. Um, and also in general, we, we try to give them kind of an idea of how to best cook their food safely um, to get rid of any kind of parasites that might be in the water that they do have access to. Um, so we definitely do see just basic hygiene problems um, that then lead to other things like infections and, um, and like, uh, like strep throat, for example, or, or things like that. So yeah, that's definitely an, a big issue. Mm. It's easy to forget how blessed we are. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it really was eye-opening. About any other questions or comments? Thank you, ladies, for your time and your very interesting presentation. Thank you all for being here. And we look forward to hearing more about your organization in the future. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. And for our members, we will meet again next Thursday, the 4th, same time, same place. I have to be away that day, so we will have a delightful substitute host whom you will be hearing about in, in the coming week. So I wish you all a safe and healthy and happy week. Take care.